Hey everybody, Melissa here, The Unlikely Hiker. I hope everyone is doing great and you had a safe and happy holiday and new year. So I thought I would do a video about just kind of 2023 year in review and 2024 looking ahead. So if you follow my channel, you know that I've had a kind of crazy year. My year started out knee deep in the Senior OEC or Outdoor Emergency Care Program, which in simple terms is just a higher level of medical training with multiple patients and uh, more difficult injuries and medical conditions. So it's just a way for me to advance my skills in the outdoors or for ski patrol, but it really is relatable to lots of industries and my training is not dissimilar at all from EMT. I did successfully complete that program, even though it was extraordinarily challenging. And to be honest, it wasn't until the last day that I really thought I would make it. Now, this didn't give me a pay raise, but it does give me the skills and confidence that I was looking for and needed to work in backcountry settings. And although it nearly sucked the life out of me, this year I'm hoping to complete the OET, or Outdoor Emergency Transportation, and the electives to complete my senior program. The electives would be MTR 1 and 2, which is Mountain Travel and Rescue, and Avalanche. After a pretty epic ski season and not successfully completing the Pond Skim competition at Jiminy Peak, I went in for surgery on my hand and a lot of you I know saw a variety of splints and casts on my hand and I had a surgery that removed the bone that articulates in between your thumb and your hand because of severe arthritis. Now as straightforward as the surgery was, the recovery is still ongoing and even though the pain is gone in my hand, basically as the OT put it, they rearranged the furniture in my hand. And it's never gonna function exactly the same. It's never gonna be as strong as it used to with that bone in place, but it is better. So I am still rehabbing it and doing very well. The first hiking trip that I took while I was recovering from my surgery on my hand was the Taconic Crest Trail. This is a 37 mile trail that goes from kind of the New York, Vermont border, and it follows the Taconic Ridge Line, which kind of hops between Vermont New York, and Massachusetts, and it ends in Route 20 in Massachusetts. I did this Memorial Day weekend over the course of two and a half days. And although it's not a particularly challenging trail, it's challenging because there's no water and there's really not too many places to camp. So you've got to kind of know the area or scout it ahead. And you do have to cache water because there's only two water sources on the trail. There can be more depending on the time of year that you do it in. Caching your water can be a little challenging on this trail unless you scope it out ahead of time. All I did was I dropped some water in one location and my friend dropped water in another location and we just marked it on Google Maps and he sent me the location for it so I could easily find it and it was no big deal. And then when I was done, I drove back and I picked up the empty or half used bottles that I didn't use. As the summer went on and I was unable to go back to waiting tables, but I really wanted to work and I didn't think that going into nursing right away would also work for me because of the weak status of my hand, I decided why not work in the Aerial Adventure Park at Jiminy Peak for the summer, as one does post-op. So it was at that point I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to take a year and work outside just until I can recover from my surgery and kind of decide, you know, what is it I want to do kind of moving forward. It was kind of a weird break in time that allowed me to do this. So I opted to do that. And I did really enjoy myself working in the aerial adventure park. And then after that, the map, which is mountain adventure park for a few weeks before the mountain closed. And then I started a couple weeks later opening up the mountain and getting everything ready for ski season, which again was a whole other learning curve and uh, learning about how mountain resorts run has been um, eye opening to say the least. I have really enjoyed getting to know all the people that I really didn't get to know before. So it's been a wonderful opportunity. So after working in mountain adventure and aerial adventure during the summer, in the fall, I went out to Southern California to hike the Trans Catalina Trail with Dave from Off Grid. 
And that was absolutely amazing. Jason Huckaba from Huck Outdoors also was on the trip, in addition to Dave's coworker, Edgar. Everybody was fabulous. And man, that was the highlight of my summer for sure. What a beautiful hike that was. I would recommend that to anybody. The heat definitely made it a little challenging. Other than that, for an East Coaster like me, it wasn't too steep. It wasn't too crazy. But man, was it beautiful. And three of the four campsites that we stayed at were on the beach. I mean, holy cow, that was just unbelievable. It was such a treat, and I really was blessed to be able to do that. We were out there for five days, four nights. I did have another couple days on the front and back end for travel days, and I would love to do that trail again. So Dave, if you're watching, feel free to invite me out to California anytime if I can swing it. I'll be out and I promise not to be annoying. And about a month after I came back from California, I was heading down to Kentucky for my second annual Red River Gorge meetup with a bunch of other people. Again, what a fantastic time. We had more people this year than we did last year and I got to meet new friends and it was unbelievable. What an amazing group of people that I call my friends. We're all like-minded. We love the same things. We love backpacking. We love gear and we love hanging out and having a good time. And Jason from Backpacking with Jason always does an amazing hike to show people through the gorge and it's just incredible. So thank you, Nicole from Nicole Hikes A Lot for organizing this. It is so appreciated and I cannot wait for next year's event. I will be there. After coming back from Kentucky, I think I had another week or so of mountain adventure that I worked at. Then I had a couple weeks off before I started back to start getting the hill ready for ski season. So I got a job as a paid ski patroller at Jiminy Peak. It started by walking the hill, getting everything ready, and then they started making snow and we're doing all kinds of things to get the mountain safe for all the people that come and ski. And I am proud to say that I get paid to do that four days a week. I work about 35 hours and it is amazing. I work with an incredible group of people. And as much as I do get to go skiing, I also do quite a bit of grunt work. Or sometimes I just supervise the younger guys, make sure they stay in line. It's definitely not glamorous. I am muddy and sweaty and disgusting and stinky. But I'm outside and I'm skiing. It, it doesn't pay great. But if you are passionate about skiing or being outside, this is a job to consider. I decided that I wanted to spend a year outside, and this is how I'm going to finish off the winter for sure. No regrets on this. I am really going to enjoy every last minute of what this winter has to offer. And I'm very appreciative that they allowed me to do this with my semi-bum hand. For me, it made more sense for me to take a job as a paid patroller than make any other job switches this late in the year. I still have some struggles going on at home, which can make things a little difficult. And if something comes up, they're going to miss me a little bit less at Jiminy than somebody who could be relying on me from, let's say, a nursing perspective. Again, the view is fantastic and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I work with a truly remarkable group of people. Looking forward to 2024 plans. Well, let's see. I don't know. It's kind of tough to say in the back of my head, I'd love to go ski Tuckerman's Ravine with some of my esteemed ski patrol friends. I think that that would be a lot of fun to do that. And hopefully somebody will have the courage to take me with them. I'm a pretty good skier. Tuckerman's could potentially be a slightly above my pay grade, but maybe not. Uh, I'll never know until I try. So I figure I should just try. I am most likely going to hike the Taconic Crest Trail again and this time vlog it. Um, again, I'll probably do it in two, two and a half days, cash my water. There's a couple people at work that might want to do it. They kind of wanted to do it in a day. I don't really have any interest in doing it as a day hike. 37 miles is pretty far. I've never gone more than 25. So hmm, we'll see if they want to do it. I'd be down for two days. Probably not one. Definitely, I will be going to see the solar eclipse on April 8th with my youngest, Ethan. We did go out in 2017 to see the solar eclipse, and we drove all the way out to western Nebraska to go see it. And man, that was magical. So we will be driving as far as we have to for good visibility and weather. 
other than that, I don't know where we're going to end up. We're just going to wing it. And um, that's my favorite thing to do is just throw caution to the wind. Just be like, hey, we're going to do this. Let's go. So that's going to be utterly fantastic and magical again. And I'm looking forward to that probably more than anything else. I said last year that I wanted to do the Northville Placid Trail and it just didn't pan out. And a lot of that had to do with the surgery and kind of my lack of cash <laughs> because I didn't work for just about four or five months and um, then took a low paying job. So I would really like to see if I can do the Northville Placid Trail this year. I'd like to do it in about seven, maybe eight days. So just one calendar week. And I'd like to do that, I'm guessing late summer, early fall. Uh, I'd prefer to avoid bugs, but I would like the temperatures to be pretty reasonably warm. There's a lot of water on the trail, so none of that is an issue. And it would be nice to kind of take a trail bath if I could. We'll see how warm the water is, though. I could maybe do that in the summer. Again, not really sure. It's going to sort of work out when the timing is right, not necessarily when the weather is right. So I'll definitely keep you posted on that. If I have to section it over two weekends, I'll do that instead. Also, I would like to do some more 46 High Peaks with Ruby. Now, I already completed all those in 2015, but I am redoing them with Ruby. However, I am taking trails and routes that I have not previously taken when possible. Not all mountains have different ways you can get to them, but a lot of them do. And then there's parts of the park where dogs are not allowed, so you kind of have to go in from a different way. So there's a few trips uh, in particular that I'm looking forward to doing, um, which also include a little bit of bushwhacking. Hopefully that won't be too challenging for Ruby. Uh, we'll find out, won't we? But I am really looking forward to a few more of those experiences with her. Another thing that I'm looking into is as long as I finish a water safety course, I'm looking at getting my New York State hiking backpacking guide license. And I would like to take women out into the backcountry that maybe don't have the confidence to go out there by themselves or would like to learn. And I would like to give them the confidence to be able to do the things that I do because it really isn't that hard. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy and I would like to give people the opportunity to maximize who I know that they can be. So if you're interested in something like that and you live in the Northeast, you can give me an email, let me know. I'll put my email in the description. Other than those things, which are mostly, you know, they're all local things, I'm keeping my options open. It's possible I might help out with Aerial Adventure also this summer, not as much as I did last year. I do want to get a local nursing job. I was looking at travel nursing, LPN. They do have some local positions, uh, part-time per diem. And I think that having mixed employment is probably going to be the best thing for me. I'm trying to maximize my love of the outdoors and mitigate that with wages that I can actually survive off of. <laughs> it, it seems like a tough thing to do though. So if anyone has any uh, advice on that, man, let me know because I have no clue. Other than that, options are kind of open. There's a few more distant trips that I would like to go on if I can afford it, if I can swing it. Um, Whatever the YouTube meetup in the fall is, I'll definitely be going to that. But other than that, um, as far as traveling for trips, I don't have anything lined up at the moment, but keeping my options open for that. So I hope you guys are looking forward to all of these things as much as I am. I'm really proud of everything that I've done this year, and I can't wait to see what next year has to offer. I'm hoping it's going to be even better because I'll actually have two hands to work with. So that's what I got for you today. I hope you all are doing fantastic. Get out there. It's winter and winter is wonderful and people need to get out more in it. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning, morning. You never know when it is over, over. All that I know is better. Our bodies move to the groove and the light that flickers We get lost in the crowd, it's getting thicker We get away, get away from the drinks and chatter 
haven't said a word, but it doesn't matter. Kill the earth and then Standing in a blurry dream. No one else can see her. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning. Let us dance this side away. 